Hi everyone, this is Jim. Welcome to this Blitz Chess postmortem. This is a postmortem of my Blitz Chess game number 205. Um, I was uh, black here, my opponent kicked off with d4, and I played knight f6 thinking we're going to get, uh, oh, maybe some kind of Nimzo Indian. And my opponent, instead of playing the uh, most common move c4 here, uh, or even knight f3, which is uh, would introduce the London system, or bishop g5 the Trumpowski, plays the move knight c3. So this move can set up the uh, richter Verasov attack after, uh, if I play d5, um, then uh, bishop to uh, g5 would be richter Verasov. But um, I played e6 here, a uh, bit of an unusual move in this position, probably probably not the best, although eh, it looks like it's still still a playable game. And now my opponent plays uh, e4 here. <clears throat> I guess uh, since he's allowed, I've allowed him to play e4, he's protected the square, and I haven't stopped him by playing d5, he can, he can get that move in. But what's interesting about this, you'll see that uh, we're only at three games in the database. After this move, we're back up to 3,000. So what's happened is we've transposed from a, uh, a d4 opening into a uh, e4 opening, um, and this is the French defense. And I just have to play d5 here, and we've got a classical French. Now, unfortunately, when I play the French, I usually play uh, the bishop b4 line rather than the knight f6 line, the win hour rather than the classical. So I'm not too familiar with it, <clears throat> but I know a little bit about it. And uh, I guess this uh, game shows the it helps to know a little bit about all the openings because uh, you never know when you might get uh, fooled by some move order transposition into playing an opening you didn't really intend. So um, after e5, the uh, the normal move is just retreating the knight to d7 and then uh, counterattacking the center with moves like uh, c5 and uh, f6. So I know that much about it. I usually, as white, I usually continue with the move f4, the Steinitz variation. But my opponent played the move knight c e2. So I've actually never seen this before. Um, but I looked it up afterwards, and um, this is a respectable line. It's known as the Shirov Anand variation. There was a game between Shirov and Anand in uh, 2000 where this was played. And it makes uh, a lot of sense. Uh, White is preparing the move c3 to shore up his center. And um, <clears throat> maybe this knight will be useful over here on the king side. So I play c5, which looks like it's a normal move. So yeah, I'm just, even though I don't know this exact uh, position, I'm playing the normal uh, uh, strategy with the French defense, which is uh, you give up the center, uh, you let White have a lot of space, and then you try to undermine it. Um, so my opponent plays c3, the normal move. I go knight c6. You also have to develop your pieces, of course. And then it looks like f4 is the main move for uh, white here. Um, but my opponent played the unusual knight f3. And now uh, you see the, the engine is sort of unimpressed with white's play, but uh, I can tell you as black it's a little bit tricky to defend this position, so I wouldn't necessarily uh, put too much stock in that. Anyway, it's a, it's a typical opening with no side. Well, basically you might say equal chances. Um, so I play bishop e7. It looks like just taking right away is the normal response here. Uh, what's the engine like? Oh, the engine likes bishop e7. That's interesting. Or c takes d4. So okay, these are both okay moves. But we're out of the opening book here. <clears throat> so I play bishop e7, and my opponent goes uh, knight f4 here. And uh, this is a nice move because it um, attacks e6, and it prevents me from playing the move... Uh, f6, which I want to play. I want to play f6 to undermine the center here, and but that would leave this pawn hanging. So uh, and this move causes me some trouble. So I forget about uh, e6 for a while and play queen to b6. Pawn goes uh, a3, and then I go ahead with the exchange. You usually have to do that sooner or later. Open up a, a file for some activity. And um, then I went to h6. So my next two moves were actually bad moves. So we go from a position where white is, I mean, where black is even, or maybe with a slight edge with the best play to a, to a position where I'm definitely worse. Um, but it, the engine suggestion here was really interesting. The engine has the idea of playing the move g5, which uh, I, I can tell you I did not think about that at all, but uh, I probably should have. It's just a, a tactical idea. So this knight has to move. Say he goes to h5 because he's eyeing this uh, nice square on f6. That's That's a a uh, good square for the knight. Um, currently it's defended, but uh, it keeps my pieces tied down trying to defend that. But the idea is that I can continue pushing the g-pawn, and now this other knight has to move. He can come forward, and then uh, this pawn is hanging. But it uh, looks like, rather than grab the pawn right away, uh, bishop to d8, h6. Let's see, what makes the most sense? Bishop to d8. I don't get that one. Let's try... Um, 
Oh, but it gives that a very high score. Bishop to d8. That's, that's a really strange move, just retreating the bishop. And then um, knight takes g7 check is a, pawn, is a peace sack. I'm not sure why uh, white would feel compelled to do that, uh, especially if it doesn't lead to advantage. So how about just a developing move like bishop to e3, defending. Yeah, why is this? And then queen takes b2. Yeah, so I thought there was a pawn grabbed involved. So <clears throat> anyway, this is a crazy position. You, you may take the computer's word that uh, white is better here, but uh, I can tell you <laughs> as a player here, it's not at all obvious. I mean, black is better. It's a negative 0.7. It's not at all obvious who's better to me. I mean, it looks like, uh, <clears throat> looks to me like uh, white has his pieces in a position for attack. This pawn is hanging. And, you know, if he gets his queen over here, my king... <laughs> Uh, is obviously not castling kingside, and he's got two pieces in the way of castling queenside. So uh, this would be a very uncomfortable position. So I would not, I would not play that way with g5. But uh, anyway, that's that's computer chess. I played h6, um, but the problem with h6 is it's um, part of a plan that doesn't really work. For one thing, uh, you want to play the move f6 in this position, and uh, h6 just weakens this uh, g6 square, right? If you play h6 and f6. Then you've got a big hole right here on g6, so uh, so it's not a good idea to play h6 in general if um, if you're going to uh, if you want to play f6 later. So you know my idea was to uh, prepare g5, and uh, I played it, but uh, then I had second thoughts in this position. I said, well, if I play g5, you know his knight's going to come in here to f6. It looks pretty bad, so. Um, I decided to bring my knight around to challenge his knight on f4. But this is uh, also not happening because he's already got um, he's got good control of this g6 square with both his knight and his bishop hitting it. So this is kind of a, a wasted move, and I have to uh, eventually move it away from there. So I've wasted two moves uh, doing things that don't make much sense, and now, uh, <clears throat> now white is better. And uh, he brings his knight into h5, keeps his advantage here for a while, um, and, uh, of course, he was attacking my g-pawn, so I defend it. And he plays g4. g4, the engine doesn't like it, thinks he should continue with b4, <laughs> which is, uh, again, very counterintuitive. Uh, you know, he seems to be attacking on the king side, and the engine wants to make a move on the queen side. So, very mysterious. But this game is really uh, complicated. I think this is one of those games that's uh, <laughs> too complicated for humans to play, or at least uh, people at my level. So g4, g5, um, okay. So g4, after g4, what did I have? Bishop to d7 or g6. Uh, g6, I should have considered that. But I've uh, taken the pressure off of um, f6. So if I play g6, I thought he would put his knight in here. Let's take a look at this. g6, knight to f6, check. I take it. He takes. And you know, he's got a strong pawn here down near my queen. And, uh, well, slight, slight edge to white. Oh, but uh, I guess as the engine looks deeper, it uh, keeps changing its mind. Yeah, I think this is, this is probably good for white. So I was trying for something else. So I went for this um, g5 idea. Stop him from pushing the g-pawn. Uh, but I, I didn't I reckon with g4, him undermining immediately. But this is actually a pawn sack. I, I can take that, and I did. Um, also, I didn't have much good alternative. If I didn't take it, <clears throat> you know, he was just going to take it, and uh, he can, I guess it's got two attackers and two defenders. I guess he's not really going to win the pawn there, but it would open up the uh, h-file, which might be dangerous. So so I decided to take. Um, and then he just um, pushed right ahead with the uh, g-pawn, and I should have uh, taken this one too. Looks like uh, h takes g6 is just good for me, because um, <clears throat> yeah, I was just uh, forgetting about one of these pieces. I have two pieces on that square, and he has two pieces on it, so I can I can take that pawn. Yeah, I was I was somehow counting that wrong, so I didn't realize I could take back. So I play knight g6, and now uh, the advantage has swung the other way. Now now white is winning. So, but uh, it's not game over yet. <clears throat> he takes the pawn, and I play rook h8 to uh, try and uh, keep some pressure on it. And now it says he should play bishop takes g6 uh, with an advantage. Bishop takes, f takes, and then knight f6 check. So he played knight g7 check. Pretty interesting idea. Still keeping an edge, so I move my king. 
And now uh, he plays knight to g5. Okay, once again, bishop takes g6 is is a, a good move. Um, and I think this is this is not a computer move. This is a this is a human move. You take this. I have to take back with a pawn, and it opens up the um, it opens up the f file as a line of attack on my queen. So so after taking my knight, he can get his knight out of the way and get his queen to f3 and have a pretty strong attack. So I think I think that's a logical move. Um, knight g5 <coughs> has its points too. He's just uh, attacking with his minor pieces and clearing the square on f3 for his queen. I was really afraid his queen was coming there any moment. So I, I take the uh, knight off. I mean, it's just too dangerous to uh, live there. <laughs> he takes back. But uh, this, this exchange is, has turned out okay for me because uh, now I can grab the pawn here. He just left this undefended. And, um, and I needed, this is not just a pawn grab. The idea with this is I'm trying to get my pieces over to defend my king side. And uh, so the advantage now has swung, swung back towards black here. And, um, and he lets me grab another pawn, and then he castles. And now I should play the move knight f4, um, which makes sense. I'm going to block out his bishop and uh, try and gobble up this h-pawn, which is uh, a menace over here on my king side. Um, <coughs> instead, I played the move knight c to e7. So I was just trying to bring another piece to the defense, and also I had the idea of playing knight to uh, f5 here. So, but now, okay, it's an even game. <laughs> so I had the advantage, but now it's an even game. And uh, bishop to c5 um, allows me to, yeah, I missed this. I saw it the next move, but I, I should just grab this h-pawn now. This is just hanging, and uh, it's just good for me. I take that, and then his knight is trapped, so I'm actually going to win the knight. And my knight, even though it's under attack from his bishop, even though my knight is under attack from his bishop, it's defended by my knight, so so I can perfectly safely take this uh, pawn and then take the knight. <clears throat> so that would been have been winning. Um, I moved my king away from the pin, but now uh, once again this allows uh, White to uh, continue with his attack, and he does. And I get in the move knight f4, and uh, this was a mistake. He can just take it, and I realize that afterwards. I was thinking uh, I want to take back with the queen, but his knight is still guarding that square, so I have to take back with the pawn. And then uh, he's got rook f to e1, and it's getting a little bit uncomfortable here. The rook can come into this square. So if the queen goes here, for example, knight e8. How about rook e8? Yeah, rook e8 check. More natural move. And uh, chasing my king around. And now knight to h5. Anyway, yeah, this looks this looks pretty bad for me. This this square here, I've abandoned the defense of that square. And also, um, his bishop is is uh, on the f8 square, so I couldn't retreat my knight to block the check. <coughs> okay, so anyway, so he should have he should have taken my knight there, opened up another file, and gotten his rook on it. So that's that's an example of good attacking play. He played uh, bishop to b4 instead, and. Um, and, uh, of course, his bishop was loose on c5, but this uh, wastes a move in the attack and gives me a chance to... Uh, it also swings the, the evaluation back in favor of black once again, so I can just take this knight. And then um, he took the uh, he took my knight here, which actually is a good move. Uh, the engine approves of that one. So I have to choose between taking the bishop and the... Uh, <coughs> or moving my knight away. I think it's better to take the bishop. Okay. And then he takes my knight. And then um, I just need to move my rook. I don't want to... Uh, I, I, I was aware of this tactic. This is a nice one. If the king takes the pawn, he has a bishop to c3 on the skewer. Now, um, I can push ahead to block it with my pawn, but his queen is on that, so it doesn't work. So this would just be uh, <coughs> real bad for me if I were to take that pawn. So, but, I, but fortunately, I have a rook move. I can lift the rook. And now I'm just better here. Even with this uh, dangerous pawn near my king, um, I've managed to get rid of enough force. I just need a few moves to uh, get my pieces out, and it looks like I'm going to have time. So uh, I just uh, start getting my pieces out, like I said. And oops, let's keep keep this. Uh, let's do this step by step. Uh, yeah, getting the bishop out of the way so the rook can come across, and then I want to put the bishop on this c6 square so I can. Uh, get it onto this diagonal. Plays rook 88, hitting my queen. 
and um, queen takes g7. Where's that? Oh, he wants me to take here with the queen. Yeah, that makes sense. That's a move. Uh, I decided I'd rather keep the queen active and threaten uh, queen g4 check. And uh, I miss my chance right here. Um, queen g4 check really finishes the game. And, and uh, I thought about that after I made the move. I thought I was just winning a piece here. I just was, uh, once again, miscounting. I mean, I'm giving up a queen for two rooks, so I do kind of win a piece, but it's not much. But queen g4 here with the check. Um, and where is this king going to go? If it goes to f1, there's a mate starting with bishop to b5 check. Yeah, so he doesn't want to go to f1. So he goes to the h file. Let's see, h2 is the most stubborn defense. Yeah, he wants to stay away from this pawn push with check. But uh, rook takes. Okay, just get rid of the rooks, or one of the rooks. And then uh, this bishop was hanging. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah, so that would have been good. That bishop was hanging. I forgot about that. So he, he threatened my queen when the bishop was hanging. So I took his rook. He takes, I take back. And now he has a move to, uh, to uh, free his bishop. And uh, so the game is about even here. So it's, I've got two rooks for the queen, but uh, <clears throat> it's still about even. Let's count the pawns. One, two, three, four, five, six against four. So I guess maybe it's about activity. I have um, <clears throat> I have a material edge because two rooks are usually better than the uh, queen. But um, if uh, if my king is too exposed, the queen is very, a very good attacking piece with all the checks and stuff. So maybe it's enough for a uh, uh, sort of a draw by perpetual or something like that. But it says he has to play queen h6 here to uh, keep the edge. So this is, uh, yeah, queen h6 is a logical move, threatening threatening checkmate. Queen h6, rook h5, queen f4, king takes g7. Well, looks like I chased the queen away. So that's a long line, but apparently leads to equality. But he played queen to d4, and uh, understandable if there's only one move. I mean, he's trying to uh, defend this pawn, but that allows e5. And now I really am just winning. Plus, he was starting to get low on time at this point. So he grabbed a pawn, I took, and then he moved his queen to a4, which is, of course, just giving the queen away. But uh, even here, you can see once again, after I've gotten rid of this uh, menacing pawn near my king, I have more pawns than he does, and I have two ricks for the queen. So uh, unless I <laughs> make another blunder, which is not out of the question, I should go on to win this game. So after uh, queen a4, my opponent realized what he'd done and resigned. So game ended that way. Um, so I hope you guys enjoyed that one. Leave any comments you have in the section below, and I will see you again soon. Bye.